Welcome to Backwoods Teacher, the American Revolution Battles and People Edition. We've got an exciting, exciting presentation for you today. The American Revolution is often portrayed as something of a stuffy time period where people wore odd clothing and wigs and a lot of red and one thing that's kind of interesting is if you look at images of the American soldiers, they all had very different uniforms on because there was not one set uniform. And they often came to the battles with their own weapons and equipment. America was and always has been a nation of a variety of people, different social classes, different groups, different uh, ethnic backgrounds, men, women, Children, young and old alike, contributed. You had the radicals at, this, at the, uh, the Sons of Liberty at the Boston Tea Party, devout patriots like Paul Revere, people seeking liberty like these gentlemen here portrayed in the 4th of July image, and of course, women who contributed to the war effort like Molly Pitcher. On the school uh, Backwoods Teacher website, we have been given an assignment that looks kind of like this. I am not going to take the time to explain this. It is explained on the site. But you will be making something like this to go along with the information that I'm giving you and information that you find when you hopefully venture off bravely on your own to look up details and facts about these battles. So this is one thing you'll be doing along with this giving you some information about some of the leaders of the war and they were all quite different and quite colorful very uh, very much more exciting than the textbook would uh, than any textbook would make them seem to be let's take a look at some of the people first starting with the British over here we have gentleman Johnny Burgoyne let's give him a little more room there we go Gentleman Johnny was something of Britain's Justin Bieber general. He was a pretty boy, very fashion conscious, selfish, somewhat arrogant. And he created a plan to attack the colonies by coming down from Canada to New York. He wanted to gain fame for himself. And this is something that often happened. The British uh, Parliament would send the generals out and let them sort of compete with each other to get the job done. A strategy that generally worked and um, forced them, you know, to to succeed. In the case of Burgoyne, though, he was uh, a good strategist, but he couldn't execute the plans because he was not necessarily a good leader. He was defeated at Saratoga by American generals Benedict Arnold and Horatio Gates. All right, the star of our presentation is none other than Ben Astra Tarleton. He's kind of like Britain's Darth Vader to our friends across the Atlantic. Sorry, but, you know, we don't like him much over here. Anyhow, he was a cavalry officer, mean and ruthless, known for slaughtering a group of uh, colonial militia. Actually, I think it was the Virginia regulars who had already surrendered. He also famously captured um, the American general Charles Lee, by threatening to burn down the tavern in which Lee was uh, having a drink. And he captured him in something like a matter of 15 minutes. Tarleton was uh, to be respected, an extremely tough, tough soldier and uh, very, very, very aggressive, just fiercely aggressive. He uh, got into a battle with uh, George Washington's cousin and famously shot Washington's cousin's horse out from underneath him. Speaking of horses, Tarleton himself, I believe, was trapped under his own horse on two different occasions. This doesn't mean that he was bad at riding horses. It means that he was extremely brave and rode into battle headlong both times he was rescued. Uh, at the Battle of Cowpens, which is in South Carolina, he was defeated. And the way he was defeated is portrayed in, in The Patriot. That's one thing that's sort of accurate. His own aggression is what led him to charge in a battle, and the militia had kind of a setup where they enveloped him and captured him in that way. Uh, well, actually, he got away. And he was later at Yorktown with Cornwallis, with whom he had a very testy relationship. Tarleton also almost captured Thomas Jefferson, uh, but when he invaded Virginia. 
and I'll have more on him in the next slide when I talk about his romantic life. I know, exciting, isn't it? Moving along, and next we have Lord Cornwallis, and he's also portrayed in the movie The Patriot, and according to the British, he was not as old as the um, filmmakers made him, but whatever. Uh, he was one of Britain's best generals, and extremely intelligent. By far, he was better than all the American generals. There's, there's no conceding that, just like Tarleton was a better, actually better at fighting hand-to-hand uh, -hand probably than any other American soldier would have been because he was much more skilled. Back to Cornwallis, though. He's responsible for many of Washington's defeats. He was not initially the top British general, but he rose up as some of the other British generals faltered. He was given uh, command of the southern of the southern campaign. Quickly captured Charleston, which was a, a horrible defeat for the Americans. They lost something like five thousand men were captured. He crushed American General uh, Horatio Gates at Camden and sent Gates uh, fleeing into the countryside. Eventually, though, Cornwallis is trapped at Yorktown by the Americans and French Navy and he surrenders and has to end the, end the war, but he does not surrender his sword personally to Washington, which shows how arrogant he was. You're being given a lot of information here that will actually help information you're supposed to use on your sheet. This lovely lady is Mary Robinson. When Tarleton returned to Britain, he apparently went after her on a bet, on a wager. He was told that he could not pick her up, and he did, and they carried on for something like 15 years. No, I'm not going to explain what that means, but in Teletubby language, they became friends. Anyhow, she was quite a big deal on her own, own right, something of an independent woman. She had a husband who was cheating on her and running around, and so she just did her own thing. But she is a famous poet of her own accord, an actress, and something of a socialite. Moving on to the Americans. Over here we have Horatio Gates. He was one of America's uh, most experienced generals, but the problem was that his experience came from being with the British. So he attempted to fight like the British. At first he did okay at the Battle of Saratoga, but he probably would not have done as well with that battle if it was not for Benedict Arnold. And later Gates is destroyed at Camden and he goes scurrying off the field. Next is Benedict Arnold. He was probably one of America's best generals, um, very decisive, experienced, and aggressive. He won several key battles, but he becomes jealous when Congress starts to investigate him for some shady money dealings. And um, he gets passed over for a promotion, becomes jealous. He needs money. Yeah, it must have been like a future Democrat because he was spending beyond his means. And he eventually sells out or attempts to sell out uh, West Point to the British and gets caught, joins the British Army, and is now has his name linked with traitor. Traitor. He's kind of like the Edward Snowden of his time. Moving along to more happy people, we have Nathaniel Green. He is sent to the south with Gates to fight the British, and he uh, does this by sapping Cornwallis' strength by a lot of hit and run attacks. He doesn't win hardly any battles, but he weakens Cornwallis and draws him further and further to the, uh, to the east, to the mountains and the swamps, and eventually helps to force Cornwallis into attacking at Yorktown. The main guy is Francis Marion. This is the swamp fox. He, is, uh, he was the guy that when Gates gets beaten and there's nobody left in South Carolina, Francis Marion and a small group of men were the only resistance to Cornwallis for a long time. And the British said he would not fight like a Christian, whatever that means. Well, what it means is that he wouldn't stand still. He did a lot of hit and run like you saw in the movie The Patriot. And uh, he was uh, he's also considered kind of like the father of the Army Rangers because of his tactics. Quite a pioneer, quite an aggressive, innovative type of soldier. Um, he got his name, the Swamp Fox, from that Tarleton fellow. Okay, these are, uh, this is like a quick overview of the battles that you can look at. The, um, 
The battles have broken down in several ways for you on this outline. The battles that the Americans win are in blue. So, I'm going to do something different here. I'm not going to read through all of these. You have a computer and you can pause this and look at them. Again, the ones in blue are the ones that the Americans won. And you may notice something if you look at this overall. I would also take notes on it. Next, this is a, a map, boys and girls, a map. And maps can be helpful if you look at the maps for once and don't look at them just five minutes before class, but look at them as a form of studying. The battles of the American Revolution fall into something of a pattern. You have the New England battles, Lexington, Concord, and Bunker Hill. And there are others, but the ones that you need to know are Lexington, Concord, and Bunker Hill. These battles take place in New England, mainly around Boston, because the British were trying to cut off the head of what they considered the revolution, which was New England. Next, you have a lot of battles that are on the coastal cities. This is not necessarily in chronological order, but I'm trying to show you a pattern. The British stick to the coast because they never lose a battle along the coast, with the exception of Yorktown. Every other battle on the coast, they win. There's a good reason for that. Then you have the Southern Campaign, and the Southern Campaign is what the, uh, the movie The Patriot was about. So the battles can be broken down into that way. There are two big battles that you need to know, also Saratoga and Yorktown. These are major turning points. The notes are right here. Pause as needed and look at them. Okay, here's some quick information about the opening battles. And it's a pretty good uh, illustration of how the British arrived. It's even got the names of the generals. You could actually complete that chart just from this. Next, we have Bunker Hill. And Bunker Hill actually was one of two hills on the uh, Charleston Peninsula in the Boston Harbor. There were two hills that the colonials tried to occupy to stop the British. And the British do take this battle, but they have to throw away tons and tons of men to win. Here's some information on the Battle of Saratoga. Again, the purpose of this presentation is to give you the notes in a way that you can look at multiple times. I'm not going to read through all of it. In between Saratoga and uh, the southern campaign, the British attacked and conquered places like um, New York and uh, the area around what is now Washington, D.C. Okay, George Washington is one of the people that you need to know about as well, um, although I did not put notes on the slide about him. There are notes right here. One of Washington's problems was that he also tried to fight the British like the British. He was, he was given the task of leading the Continental Army, so he's going to lead that army like the British would. This does not work very well because his men are not trained like British regulars. They're undisciplined. They're Americans, you know. I mean, we're basically kind of a, a you know, hardworking yet lazy people at the same time. His men are mostly militia, so they're, they're on short-term contracts, which were due to expire midway through the war. Washington lost the capital, which was Philadelphia. The Continental Congress had to flee, which would be nice if they would do that today. Maybe if they would go away, things would be better. But anyhow, they're still here. So at one point in the war, Washington's troops were so low with, on supplies and morale that they were like season ticket holders at a Jaguar game. Moving right along. Washington and his men eventually go to Valley Forge, where they freeze while the British are warm and toasty in Philadelphia. But he makes a surprise attack. He crosses over the Delaware and attacks the British base at Trenton. I'm going to move through these things. Okay, if you notice here, I've got some of the generals where they were. Here is Gates. Here's Francis Marion, and here's Green. They were all in the south. If you look at this, you can make the connection between them. Gates was at Camden, uh, Green was at Guilford, and Francis Marion defeated Tarleton at Cowpens. This battle, you should know.